so I slept with my hair wet last night. <laughs> And it looks like I slept with my uh, hair wet last night. I'll style it when my makeup is done. This is a true get ready with me. I am going over to my parents' Airbnb because they are visiting. So I'm going to get ready. And I've gotten a lot of really cool things in PR that I've wanted to try. So I pulled out a bunch of stuff, a bunch of new makeup, and we're just going to slap it on my face, okay? Kapari sent over this tripeptide lip cloud. And I'm hoping it's going to moisturize the lips and just be good while I'm applying my makeup. Pari is an amazing body care brand, so I feel like this is going to be good. They sent two over of these in a PR package. I had a friend visit, and I gave her a bunch of stuff, and I gave her one of these. It has, like, I feel like a little bit of exfoliants in there, maybe? really hydrating. This is going to be good for just letting something sit on your lips before doing makeup. And that's something that I always recommend. I don't always do it because I forget. But if you remember, put something really hydrating on your lips or exfoliating before you do your makeup. So that way, by the time we're ready to put on the lip products, we got the goods. You have nice, juicy lips. Face primer. I don't believe this is new, but Makeup Forever sent it over. This is the Hydra Booster Primer. It's a base hydrant. So I don't know. I like hydrating face primers. So I thought I'd go ahead and give this a try. Makeup Forever usually does no wrong. Ooh, I like this. Okay, that's the consistency. I do, by the way, have my Mistine sunscreen on. Must do in the summer especially. Okay, so this does feel like kind of like a lightweight moisturizer consistency. I used my Chantecaille moisturizer this morning, which is amazing. Very expensive, but they do a good job with their skincare. Can't lie. Okay, so this is a really nice lightweight hydrating primer. I like the way it's making my skin feel. It feels really smooth as well. I mean, I, I'm not sure if this is new or not. I believe it is not, but I like that. That's nice for dry skin. I'll have to continue using that. And if you're new to my channel, a one of my favorite videos to make are speed reviews. I'll put like 30, 40 items in one video. So make sure you're subscribed because I will update you on all of these products in those speed reviews eventually. Okay, this one is one of the more exciting items in today's video. I got sent over a few shades of the new Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. So let's try it out. I have no clue what color to get. It was very confusing, but here's the bottle. This is 305N. I feel like this might be a touch too deep. Here's 310N. That means it's darker, right? Okay. I was overestimating <laughs> my tan. <laughs> I'm more tan than normal. and I feel like every color and foundation I own is too light for me now. So this is 245C. It looks like it might be a little too cool for me, but let's see. And I got this from a iHeart Revolution. <laughs> PR package. It's a watermelon sponge. I don't know. We're gonna use it to apply today. Okay, that's an okay color. So 245C is the color I'm gonna be using today. So let's see. I like to use my finger to kind of spread the product out. I'm really excited about this product, you guys. Lancome normally kills it with their skincare products. So it has almost like a subtle kind of paint like scent to it which is normally off-putting but it's not like overpowering or anything i'm not really bothered by it okay and let's blend it out with my watermelon i love watermelon it is a favorite fruit of mine i'm not used to the texture or shape of this sponge so it feels weird blending it out oh that looks pretty it does have a nice little glow to it i am gonna apply a little bit more not that i don't like this sponge but anytime i open a new sponge from a new brand it feels weird to me. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm used to the small shape of my beauty blender right now. I'm just gonna take one more squirt of the foundation, which I didn't show you the consistency of it. It looks like this. And I want to get the areas that I like to have a second layer of foundation down, which is right on the cheek area. Like most people, I have a little additional redness here. And then the nose as well, because foundation can be tricky on the nose. So I like to have a little extra cover 
bridge there. And then around this area, it's a little red on me and on most people as well. Then let's get the outsides of the face because this is not my perfect color. It's good, but she's not perfect. I'm. S Can you believe, like, I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> I used to never use brushes for foundation literally used to hate it and now it's all i use this is the sigma multitasker brush very good foundation brush i normally don't put too much foundation on my forehead I like this area to be well covered and wow i mean that looks very very nice it has a nice fresh glow to it it looks like it might hold up pretty good on oily skin as well it's not super blurring or anything but it just sits really pretty on the skin which i'm not surprised by lancome is known for their foundations and base products so i'm excited to see how this wears in the humidity in this summer weather right now and i'm just kind of using this <laughs> sponge press everything in pick up excess product make everything look natural and skin like okay i like this it looks very natural and skin like like the finish of it is really skin like i don't have any new concealers or brow products so i'm gonna go ahead and pop that on off camera for eyeshadow this is not the first time i'm using this palette you've seen me use it on my channel but since i've been away this weekend my parents have been here i haven't had too much of a chance to play with the moonlit seduction palette from pat mcgrath so i wanted to do one of the looks that i envisioned in my head when it comes to pat mcgrath a lot of times on camera you know I do the crazy intricate looks but when it comes to everyday makeup which is kind of what I'm doing today I just wanted to do one of the simple everyday looks that I had in my head and I think this is more realistic for you guys that pick this up anyways so I did this look it's very very pretty I'm gonna show you how I did it so I'm taking a Sigma detailed blending brush and we're going into this shade right here and I kind of like that winged out effect so I'm pressing it along the outer lash line and then kind of creating a somewhat winged out shape I am going to bring it in just a little bit, but you can see how I'm pulling that color outwards. I'm really sad that I haven't gotten the chance to go ham with this palette yet. I'm actually filming my palette rankings after this video. <clears throat> and I'm going to have to mention in that video that I'm not quite ready with this palette yet. I want to create a few more looks. I just haven't found the time quite yet. But this shade is my favorite matte shade in the palette. I find if you watch my review you know this but if you haven't watched my review there's two other matte shades in here and I don't know I just don't find them to be the most complimentary to the glimmer shades in the palette I mean I suppose there's a, a couple shades that do match those glimmery shades but I just would have preferred something different I feel like it could have been a game changer in the palette if the mattes were different plus those mattes really are in so many Pat McGrath palettes that I wanted something different. The colors pull very warm on me in the crease and I just don't like that look so much. I'm not always looking for like a warm reddish shade in my crease with all of my Pat McGrath palettes. So I'm sticking to only this cool toned gray color and I think this is such a pretty color in this palette. And I've been wanting to use this shade right here. It's kind of like a grayish platinum shade. I'm using an Isom W21 and this shade looked like a blitz astral to me until I swatched it against the actual blitzy glitzy shades in the Pamagrath palette. This is not a blitzy glitzy shade. As you can see, it's not a lame shade at all. It still is really glimmery, really pretty. So I'm just putting this all over the lid. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little deeper than I thought it was going to be. It has a little bit of a deeper base than I anticipated, but I still think it is so pretty for this very simple kind of smoky eye. I'm taking a BK Beauty A503 and I'm gonna blend the edges out here so it's not such a harsh line. And then I'm going in with this shade right here where this is like a shimmery white. I'm using that as my inner corner color and right here, this color is just so useful. I will do the lower lash line, of course, but how simple and pretty is this look from Pat McGrath? I really like that I was able to get this look from the palette. I'm gonna quickly throw on a little bit of Pat McGrath concealer. This is not new. I don't have a new concealer for today's look, so not very interesting. Okay, so my concealer is down. Sigma launched. This is called the Soft Focus Setting Powder, and I have two shades, and it definitely looks like Vanilla Beans, my girl. So I'm going to try this. I can't be the only person that gets excited about a new setting powder because I feel like a good setting powder can really erase all of the 
pores and imperfection on your face. So every time I try a new setting powder, I'm like, is this gonna be it? Is this going to blur my face and give me perfect skin? So I'm gonna make sure my concealer is all blended out and pushed in. And I'm gonna take it a little bit on a damp sponge. The shape is kind of hard. Oh, this is really light. This sponge, don't recommend for this purpose. It's kind of hard to get in the areas of the face, like the inner corner. <gasps> Wait, but this powder, we have a good one. This is why setting powders excite me. Look at this. And the damp sponge also is key. Oh, yes, Sigma. Okay, so this is with the Sigma powder. Without the Sigma powder, you can see it literally blurred all of these. I will say this foundation is kind of settling here, looking a little dry. I don't get so worried about that anymore because of the climate. Normally it ends up working out. Wow, okay, let me put it on my forehead. I'm gonna try it with a brush on the other side to see. Ooh, you guys, I think we have a winner here. I'm gonna use my refer number 19 brush to see if it was the sponge that was magical or if this powder is a new favorite. We have found a winner, 100% for sure. This side with the sponge does look better. But both sides look really great, incredibly blurred, kind of Maybelline Fit Me, Huda Beauty Pound Cake kind of powder, which are my favorites, extremely blurring. Okay, I honestly was not expecting that. Sigma, their new setting powder, is good. It is real good. I'm gonna quickly do the lower lash line again. So really simple, just going to go back into my Pat McGrath palette, take this shade, I'm just running it. Most of the color on the outer half of the lower lash line. Kind of get the pigment off of the brush, and then blend it inwards. Then I'm gonna take a little bit again of the platinum shade. I'm just gonna not put too much on, but I'm just running a little bit along the lower lash line. Just keeping everything consistent looking. That looks good, you guys. I really like this look. Okay, for bronzer, I'm excited. These are a new formula from ColourPop. These are the Super Shock Bronzers. And I got a couple shades here. I think we're gonna go with the lighter one to start. So this is the shade Get Sandy. I don't know if this is gonna apply good with a powder brush. No, it feels more like a cream. So I Heart Revolution sponge is getting more love. This is actually a really good shape though for this. It's not giving me much color. I wonder if it's the product or do I need to go in with a different color? So this has a little bit of pink in it. Let me try a different color. And I do prefer to apply this with a sponge. I don't know if you can see, but I'm not saying it's completely cream, but it's definitely creamier. So this is what Isle Bet looks like. Definitely a little bit warmer. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on top. Just a touch. I think these are pretty mixed, but the first shade was a little bit pink for what I was looking for. And I'm gonna repeat it on the other side of my face, what I did, so. Getting Sandy goes down first. Now into Isle Bet. Hmm. I mean, hear me out. These are good. It looks pretty and smooth on my skin. Didn't pick up any product underneath. Looks really natural, but I don't know that I'd prefer this over any of the cream bronzers that I already have, but it looks good. They got the job done. Gonna have to continue playing with it to really gather my opinions, but not a bad first impression at all, but nothing amazing. Now for blush. Ofra came out with a bunch of collabs with different influencers, and I got the whole lot sent to me. Really excited to play with some more, but I figured I was in need of a new blush. So this is from Ofra once again, and this is a collab with Glam with Susan, actually. Let me turn the lights down a little bit so you can see. Very pinky, not the perfect color for today's look, but that's okay. I love the look of this. I think we're gonna mix this shade and this shade here. So this is a BK A507. Let's do this shade with a hint of this shade. Put it back here to start. Okay, pretty. My face is definitely on not the drier side, but it's more matte right now because of that Sigma powder. The Sigma powder does not have any shimmer or shine. <laughs> this blush is pretty. It's hard to mess up a powder blush. The color's really pretty. I think Susan did an awesome job picking the colors. So I really like this palette. It's very, very nice. The blushes I chose, 
are a little bit more on the matte side as well. Very pretty. I like this palette. Definitely check out the other collabs. Another one that I have sitting on my desk to try is by Ali Dawson. How fun is this? Isn't that? I can't wait to go ahead and use that. I have that laid out to play, but that's nice. I like this. Cool, cool. Thank you, Ofra. Okay, and then highlight. I do have a highlight from Ofra. This is from Ali Dawson's bundle. This is the All of the Lights highlight. It's a quad of a bunch, I believe, of different highlights from Ofra. And I just feel like this one was gonna look good with what I'm wearing. The Ofra highlights are very, very nice. I am familiar with the formula. So I wanted to give this some love. So I'm using a Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush. Just gonna use it for my highlight. Gonna mix all of them together. This is gonna be blinding, so be ready. I just felt like I could use something blinding because my face isn't as glowy right now. I'm going to apply it sparingly. Ooh. I mean, you guys know Ofra is known for their highlights and how blinding they are. So I'm going to use a light hand and it goes with the I look perfectly go above the lip as well. Very, very nice. So I have this setting spray right here from Kate Somerville. This is the makeup setting spray, Uncomplicated Kate SPF 50 soft focus setting spray. And I already do have some sunscreen on. Can never have too much. I don't know about this. Let's see the squirt. Maybe not. Okay, here. Hopefully it's not potent. I'm like aerosol can ones like these. Scare me. I don't like setting sprays like this. They're too intense. The fragrance is really strong. <laughs> Burning. Mm. But wait, this did a good job setting my makeup, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you can kind of see it sitting on the hairs of my face, but just take a sponge. Here we are, bringing out the watermelon. Once you take a sponge, I feel like that did have a soft focus effect and it made my makeup look better, right? Once we pressed it in. Huh, okay, the application of this was terrible, but I, I, I like what it did to my makeup. It hydrated my makeup more. It, I think it did add kind of like a soft focus effect. Normally, with setting sprays like these, don't like them. This one did something. I like this. I have to suffer a little, but I do like it. I'm just gonna take a black eyeliner from Hourglass. I'm gonna run this along my upper lash line really quickly, and then we'll work on lashes and lips. Okay, eyeliner is done. Can't believe I've been so into pencil liners lately. I've been liking the softer, less precise look. I don't know who I am. Anyways, <laughs> one size sent over this new mascara. This is the Fantasize Mascara. I already know this this wand is about to be too fat for my little lashes. Let's see. I usually like most of one size's stuff, so hopefully, hopefully. Okay, it's first use. I normally don't like mascaras on first use, but we're breaking her in. So how are we doing on the lower lash side? It's a bit big for these little lower lashes, but I'm making it work. I am. Hey, okay, get the upper lashes. I feel like this could get clumpy with too many layers. I feel like if you already have naturally nice lashes, you will like this. But if you're trying to create lashes out of nowhere, like me, it's not happening. <laughs> It's not. Gonna continue to use this, because like I said, mascaras require a little bit of breaking in. It's okay. Ooh, okay, this is a good one. Lily Lashes sent over their new Butterfly Lash Collection, which are half lashes, though looking at these, my lash line is very small. People say I don't have small eyes, but that's just compared to my face. The actual size of my eye is really small, <laughs> so I don't know how half lashy these are gonna be. But, oh, these look so delicious. Okay, we're gonna do Dreamy. I love Lily Lashes. I know they're expensive, I know but they have some gorgeous, gorgeous lashes. So let's see, here's a closer look. Aren't they so pretty? You definitely won't need to uh, trim these. If you have a big eye, these are gonna be true half lashes, but on my eye size, the length is really flattering. Oh, these are gonna be pretty. Okay, yes, let me pop these on. I use the Duo Lash Adhesive in the green, by the way. Okay, so this Kate Somerville spray, I can kind of see like the sunscreen sitting on top of the hairs of my skin. So that is something to note. I like the way that this looks, but be warned, shave your face because it will stick to those hairs and you need to press the sunscreen in. But because they're sunscreen, I'm not mad. Can't believe I'm going back to that. I'll be back, lashes take a while for me to pop on, but I love the way these look. Half lashes are a huge thumbs up. These are a dream. They are beautiful for lips. 
I'm pumped, okay? I've had this PR package from Rear Beauty for a while, haven't had the opportunity yet to break it in. So let's do it. So these are the new lip liners and lipsticks from Rare Beauty. I'm excited to finally test this formula. So give me a minute, I got to decide what we wanna do here. Do I wanna go purple? Maybe something brighter since I have a darker eye look? I have picked a shade. We're gonna go with fun because I wanted something more fun. So we're gonna start off with the Kind Words Matte Lip Liner. These are not brand new at this point, but I'm excited to give these a try. And it looks like they're sharpenable. There's a sharpener at the end. Awesome. Oh yeah, I like this. This is like a little warmer. It'll go with my blush. It's a smooth, creamier lip liner. We'll have to see on the longevity. Let's take a look at the lipstick. It's the same packaging as her other lip balms and products. So you push it, you pull the product out. Again, this is the shade Fun. It's a little deeper, but I think it's going to mesh with my natural lip color very pretty. Oh, I like this. Mm, it kind of has like a little sweetness to it when it's on the lips. I really like this. Okay, I'm gonna make my hair look better and I'll be back. I don't think there was a single bad product. Okay, one sec, BRB. Hair is so much better right now, nothing. A half inch curling iron cannot fix. So if you have curly slash wavy hair, get yourself a half inch curling iron for the days where your hair is funky. Anyways, here's the final look. I mean, I think I liked everything that I tried. The worst thing in the video was the one size fantasize mascara, but it's just, it's not built for my lashes, but everything else was really, really good. Standout amazing products, the Sigma setting powder and the Lily Lashes half lash, and then solid products so far, the Rare Beauty lip products, obviously the Pat McGrath palette, the Oaf, Pretty much everything was good, so <laughs> very successful video. I will have everything linked down below that I used today if you're interested in trying anything. If you've tried any of these products, as always, let me know your thoughts, your skin type, all of that. Love to converse about it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.